Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the Windy City of Chicago. My name is Mr. G, where it's 75 degrees under sunny skies across the upper Midwest in the Great Lakes this afternoon. So that warm weather will continue across the Midwest at least through Friday before we have our storm that's going to be coming out of the Rockies and moving through the northern plains with some rain and thunderstorms and even a little bit of snow on the backside of that system. That's right, folks. We're not done with the snow just yet. We can still get a little bit of snow and when I look at the models There's the potential for uh, several inches of snow to fall across the Twin Cities about the 22nd or 23rd of, of, August, of April if the models hold true but at this time I am seeing the potential for a pretty significant snowfall across the upper Midwest so Regardless of how warm it is now, I guess we're not quite done with that wintry precipitation, but let's move on with the rest of the forecast. But before we do, uh, everybody do me a favor, leave a like down in the comment section and leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And remember to hit that bell so that you can be notified whenever I post another video. But let's go on now as we take a look at the radar so I can show you some of the trouble spots around America today. All right, as we take a look at the live radar right now, we are looking at a much more active weather pattern than we saw earlier in the week. Things will become more active as we move on through the remainder of the week across the Midwest and into the East Coast. We do have this big area of tropical moisture down here along the Gulf Coast, off the coast of Texas, and over into Florida. We're seeing some showers and thunderstorms. A lot of heavy rainfall is in this area as an area of low pressure is developing down off of the Gulf Coast of Louisiana and Texas right here. Here, and that's going to lead for a lot of heavy rain and even some severe weather potential as well as we move through the remainder of the week. And we're looking at a few clouds and showers in the northeast right now as we have an offshore flow and an area of low pressure in the northeast in the, uh, the New England area, but that's a very weak area of low pressure. And we're looking at our storm system that will be moving into the plains that's coming out of the northern Rockies, moving into the high plains, and that's going to eventually spread some precipitation over Minnesota and Wisconsin as we move into Thursday and Friday but right now we're seeing those rain showers in the valleys and on the beaches and snow up in the Cascade mountain range that is to look at the radar across America let's talk about that forecast all right, here we are as we moving on with our weather forecast, and we're going to be talking about those current temperatures that we're seeing outside right now, and look at all of those 70s all over the Midwest and the Great Lakes, and even into the Northeast as well, we're seeing those 70s and some 80s down across the South in the Southeast and the Gulf Coast, and in the Southwest, we're also seeing those temperatures in the 80s. The only cold spot across America is in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies where we have 40s and 30s in place respectively but uh, for the most part everyone is enjoying a very nice day out there across the Great Lakes and the eastern half of the United States temperatures are very warm and pleasant for everybody and for dry for the most part for now but we will have some um, rain to talk about and severe weather as well let's move on as we take a look at our Temperature change over the last 24 hours as we can see it's getting a little bit warmer still across the eastern United States We are a few degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday So there we are still warming across the east, but as you can see it's getting colder across the Northern Plains and the, uh, the Northern Rockies now that pool of cold air is going to be shipped into the east when we get into the weekend and we're going to be seeing temperatures much colder as we head into Saturday and Sunday across the Great Lakes and the, the Northern Plains as well. So we're going to be seeing those temperatures drop about 20 to 30 degrees across the northern half of the U.S. as we head into the weekend or through the weekend at least. Here is our dew points. We're seeing that humidity rise here across the Midwest and up to the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes. And we're seeing that warm air and moisture advance uh, advect out ahead of our next storm system that will be moving through the Midwest as we head through the mid through the latter half of the week. And here we are as we look at those winds. We're seeing those winds coming up from the south and southwest out ahead of our storm system. We have a large area of high pressure 
over the eastern half of the United States. So we're seeing a predominantly south and southwesterly wind as we're getting that return flow on the backside of that ridge in conjunction with advection out ahead of our uh, advancing storm system and that trough in the jet stream out over the northwest. So we're seeing those winds in the 20 to 30 miles per hour range. So it's quite breezy across the plains and into parts of the northern plains as well. Here we are, so we're gonna be looking at our pattern this week. For the most part, we have this long wave ridge out over the eastern half of the United States. So we have a pretty high amplitude ridge. So that is allowing for lots of warm air to lift north into Minneapolis and Wisconsin, and we're seeing it into Michigan, and even into parts of the Northeast and New England as well. We're seeing those temperatures in the 70s and 80s. Our cold spot is here in the Pacific Northwest, where it's going to be a bit chilly and wet as well. We're also seeing nice balming weather down across the central and southern plains and over into the southwest. And we are also looking at that potential for that warmth to continue uh, for this week again across the eastern half of the United States and into the northeast as we see that southwesterly flow continue to pump that warm air from Minneapolis all the way over to Boston, where we're going to be seeing temperatures approach the 70s and 80s, and some records will be challenged as well. So we're going to be seeing some daytime high temperatures for April to get challenged and maybe even broken in a few areas. But we're going to get real close to some record highs here over the next couple of days. And we are also going to be seeing uh, that warm continue across the eastern where we have that ridge of high pressure just off the mid-Atlantic seaboard, and that's going to continue to pull that warm air into the uh, eastern United States and into the northeast, where we're going to be very warm Thursday and Friday, where we're going to be seeing those temperatures uh, approach the 80s as well and, and into the mid-80s. All right, so we're going to be seeing those temperatures cool down significantly as we head into the weekend and early next week because our western trough is going to be heading to the east. And as that trough moves into the eastern United States, we're going to be seeing those temperatures drop dramatically. And we could even see some snow over parts of the northern Great Lakes and the northern plains as we head through our week and into the early part of next week. And here we are as we take a look, those wet conditions that we will be seeing Thursday and Friday across the Midwest. We're going to be seeing our showers and thunderstorms here through the Midwest and into the Northern Plains. Some of these storms can be severe and we're going to be seeing uh, rain on the backside. And this storm system is going to be warm and be warm for the most part. So we won't see very much snow from this system, but we could see some snow over there over the Rockies and to Colorado and Wyoming as this storm progresses to the east and northeast as this guy is going to lift into eastern Canada as we head toward the weekend and here we are with that potential for some severe thunderstorms tornadoes is not going to be a big threat with this but we are going to be seeing some large hail and some torrential rainfall with damaging winds as well we're going to be seeing that severe weather mainly through the central plains and parts of Missouri so Iowa Missouri uh, Arkansas and through uh, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, all the way down to Texas, we're going to be seeing that potential there for some severe thunderstorms as we move Friday and Friday night. And then we're going to be seeing that severe threat shift to the east on Saturday as that severe weather approaches the Great Lakes. The potential will be there for some heavy rain and some flooding with damaging winds as well. But tornadoes are not going to be a primary threat with this storm system. But I wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado, but for the most part, tornadoes are not expected with this round of severe weather, but just mostly heavy rain, some hail, and damaging winds. And we got that tropical moisture down along the Gulf Coast. So we're going to be seeing that heavy rain across the southeast and through parts of Florida. So we have a slight potential for some severe weather down across the south, southeast as well. Uh, flooding, heavy downpours, an isolated tornado could occur. And that is because of the area of low pressure that's going to be right offshore off the coast of New Orleans. So that's creating a twist in the atmosphere because we have a surface area of low pressure that kind of 
that has some uh, tropical characteristics trying to develop with it. So some weak tornadoes could be possible right along the immediate Gulf Coast. And we can see some water spouts as well. Here we are as we take a better look at that area of low pressure that's developing down off the Gulf Coast, off the coast of New Orleans and Louisiana. So we're seeing that area of low pressure that's going to generate some heavy rain showers right along the coast. And we're going to be seeing those showers across most of the Gulf Coast and into the southeast in Florida. And we're going to also be looking for that potential for that system will move onshore on Thursday. And we're going to be seeing that rainfall expand throughout the southeast and the Gulf Coast. And a little bit heavier rainfall and then those thunderstorms will be an issue as well. Nice weather will occur across the southeast and through the Carolinas and Maryland and Virginia. So your area will remain pleasant as this will be mostly focused along the Gulf Coast and Florida. And here is the other alert we're going to be dealing with with this uh, weather pattern. We have an area of high pressure off the coast of Florida and our low pressure to the west and that is creating for a very strong flow off of the sea. So we're going to be seeing uh, some choppy waters off of the Atlantic coast of northern Florida. So Jacksonville, Daytona Beach, going to be kind of rough out there, small craft advisory, and maybe the potential there for some coastal beach erosion and coastal flooding along the beaches in Florida as we're going to have that strong onshore flow because of that uh, area of high pressure to the north and that area of low pressure to the south, and those circulating winds will kind of increase that flow off of the ocean. That is a look at your weather forecast. Mr. G is a little bit under the weather today, but I did power through it because I had to make sure you guys got your weather forecast in. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. It's probably just hot and kind of dry, so I'm just not used to the heat. <laughs> it's, you know, we just shot up in the temperature over the last couple of days. But anyway, that's your weather forecast. Thanks for watching me today, guys. I will be back tomorrow with another video for you, so uh, leave your likes, comments, and subscribe.